Hello, welcome to January 12th, 2023's Wheel of Hell. I am joined today by first time wheel watcher, wheel spinner, uh, Neil Ronahan of NWR. Hi. Uh, tell people, what's the one sentence of who you are? Um, I, as of... In, in two months, I will be will have been doing NintendoWorldReport.com stuff for fifteen years. Jesus, uh, I started off just like writing news stories and junk. I should I should go and dig up like one of the first news stories that I wrote. It's probably it's it's definitely write, rewriting a press release essentially. Um, but then since then, I've gone on to become the news editor, and then I was director for a long time. I became the owner at some point over that fifteen year period, and at this point, I am. Uh, technically, my title still reviews editor, but it's more Jordan Rudex territory. I just kind of hang out and talk shop with director John Raritan and and Jordan and other people. And I'm I've been doing this for a long time, man. I'm tired. <laughs> I got two kids now. No, I <laughs> I totally get it. Um, yeah, it's been uh, been excited to get you on. Glad we could find a time to do it. You know how the wheel works. I'm gonna bring it up. And we're going to give it our first spin, and we're going to see what tonight's going to start with. And tonight is going to start with a DS or 3DS game. All right, let's um, go. I'm so, that means you... mm -hmm. so it's just from the DSi world? Or... So, no, so, so I don't have a list for that. I, uh, not all of the systems are cataloged on that spreadsheet. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I'm thinking, ooh, what do I want to... What's a good? What's a weird DS? What's the weirdest DS game you ever reviewed? Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to go. Bring not, up my my yeah. Review. Not best, not worst, just weirdest. Um. Hmm. Oh. Well, yeah. Somehow I feel like this is gonna have to end with me doing some kind of ranking of games that I gave an eight or higher to. <laughs> uh. Galactic Tazball. Hell yeah! All right. <laughs> um, do I didn't review that many? I guess I guess because I did start in two thousand eight. Yeah. Um, I only reviewed about what is this like twenty five DS games maybe. Great. Well, the good news is, uh, I believe I can make this happen. Um. And for the record, I gave Galactic Tazball a seven out of ten. Great. It's okay. Um, what is happening with this? Um, one second while I try and get this booted up. Uh, it was... It is having trouble. Let me try this one. There we go. No, an error has occurred. Uh-oh. Let me try. This. Trying to boot the cartridge. And it is not working on for oh that might be it. Is it working now? If it is, no, an error has occurred. Unfortunately, that is not working. Let me try and pick a different game then. Um You know, alphabetically this is right at the top of the list, so I'm gonna do this. Uh I'm gonna share this with you so that you can see this, and then I'm also gonna uh, make sure that this is getting captured for everyone at home. <laughs> um, DS is weird, dude. Yeah. All I right. forgot that this came out on DS. One versus 100. Yes. Um, come on. I'm going to say transform. There it is. All right. So I'm going to also change... The oh my god, there's so many one versus one hundreds in Twitch's directory. Well, 
<laughs> this is A1 versus 100. We're going to try... Oh! Would you believe me if I told you this game doesn't support the touchscreen for menus that are on the touchscreen? That's, <laughs> that's an incredible start. Multiplayer. Oh, this is like local wireless. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Single player. What the fuck is 1 versus 100 poker? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna try that. Take a look at the questions and bet on getting the right answer. If you're correct, win the amount you bet. Get it wrong, and you lose your bet. Before the Sims started rocking out together in their custom-built cribs, Sim City existed as what kind of game? Select your bet. 5,000. Yeah, yeah, I think that might be A. Yeah. Uh-huh. What? How do I input this? <laughs> uh huh. Does, does it use the microphone? <laughs> no. What the fuck is happening? I'm gonna. Well, this does have a Metacritic of thirty-eight out of a hundred. Incredible. Um, yeah, the, uh, touch screen is configured I do like, correctly. IGN reviewed this back at a time when IGN reviewed more games. Yes. Um, IGN noted that, quote, you can opt out to take the money after each round, but doing so just leads back to the main menu. Of course it does. The what else would you just do? disappears. There are no unlocks of any kind. Um... All right, we're going to go into the main 1 versus 100 mode and hope that this one works. <laughs> oh my god, it's Bob Saget. R.I.P. Yes, it is. Yeah, I'm trying to answer. Uh, something is happening with my <laughs> DS games, and I don't think they're working. I'm really trying, but you know what? I think this might be an issue with how I'm playing them. So I'm going to stop and go to 3DS, All unfortunately. Right. I do want to point out that the, so the publisher of that game, yes, uh, Destination Software Inc., better uh -huh. known as DS Games, which is funny in the context of DS. Yeah. Uh, actually, their location is not that far away from me. I mean, they, closed, yeah. they, they closed 16 years ago, but... In, in, in Morristown, New Jersey, which is uh, legitimately, like, I I could be there and back within, like, a half an hour. Hell yeah, you could. <laughs> All right. Um, this is what we're going to do instead. We're going to play a 3DS game. And I'm going to share it with you. How's this? Um, nothing is showing up right now. Uh, you have to... On Discord, I think you have to back out and come back in. Uh, of, like, okay. the video, not the call itself, but... Okay, there we go. Should, yep, it's good. Yep. Oh, yeah. Some pilot wings. Uh... Yeah, so we're going to stream some Pilot Wings Resort for a little bit here. The Monster Games action. Oh, yes. Speaking of developers near us. Yeah. Yeah, cuz they're 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 Minnesota, right? Or yep. Yeah. Uh all right. Oh. We're going to be guest E. Oh, we got a sign. <laughs> I have flown here before. I do. Have you flown here before? Like, that's such a Nintendo phrasing. Yes. All right. But I still have to start with training. Yep. I actually, I played some Pilot Wing 64 recently. Oh, nice. And that game can be frustrating, but it's still really good. 
and this game, this game, I have a very good memory of this game. This was, if we if we ever do get to the ranking of games that I gave an eight or higher, I believe I gave this game an eight. Right. And I forget, was this the the last official Woohoo Island game? Um. Or no, we fit we fit you. We fit you. Yeah. Was the end of that. And then Nintendo uh, created Spaco Square, and that is all they did. They created it, did nothing else with it. Nintendo yes. Switch Sports. Uh, yeah, no, this was a launch title, not a launch window. Um, yeah. Nintendo's first party ga launch games were this, Nintendogs plus Cats, and Steel Diver. Yep. And of them, I mean, Nintendogs plus Cats was very good, but it was also really just Nintendogs with better graphics and literally, and cats. Yeah, it um, is in the title. The Steel Diver uh, should not have cost as much as it did. Steel and, Diver would have been a really good eShop launch title. Yes. And then um, this was, you know, it's a little content light, but it's very good. Yeah. Yeah, like I would say this is this is one of the launch era 3DS games. Like if we, just thinking like that first six months of the system. One of the ones that I think holds up the best. Ocarina of Time 3D probably being the one that holds up the best from that Oh era. definitely. Alright. But I do I like it I do wish that that games like this could still exist, but I, like, it's, this is a niche. Yes, it is. I mean, you can get, like, simulators on Steam, but, like, not exactly like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I had some, I had some good fun with, like, Flight Sim on, uh, on mm -hmm. Series X. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, th there is, like, there's an arcade flair to this that I remember... There were a couple couple Wii games that I mean like used the Wii remote to, you know, guide planes around. I mean we Wii Sports Resort literally did it, but I remember like there was probably one that I reviewed. Um that like there were a couple like third party games that were pilot wings like that. Oh, yeah. I think some of them were terrible, but some of them were, <laughs> were totally fine. Oh whoa, like, uh, third party Wii games being terrible? I know, I know. Stop me if, if you've heard this. I, I think the Switch might have overshadowed it. Oh, I mean, yes. The the difference being that Wii's audience did not connect to the internet, so your shovelware had no value if it was not printed on a disc and cluttering of a physical store shelf. Yeah, if it's just sitting in a Coles for 10 years, that's how you know it was, it was the Wii era. Whereas the Switch, you can trust its audience to be connected to the internet, which means it is way easier to get your trash in front of people. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, and um, you are absolutely right, GX, that if Nintendo would invest in uh, invest more in download-only titles, there would be a place for a game like this. Yeah, but, like, yes. Their budgets really, yeah, do tend to be very small for a download only game and whereas yeah. like this game like does not immediately appear to be a relatively high budget until you remember the part where this thing was probably made in like eight months yep uh if i had to guess based on when uh final hardware was available and when they would have trusted an external company like monster even a trusted one. So with that, you pretty much are like, okay, you're paying extra for all the manpower to get this thing yeah. to happen. Cause when was this, was this announced? I don't even think this was announced at the E3 before. I think this was- No, this was announced- That September event. Yeah, the September event. Where they announced event. the launch date. But yeah. So some, I mean, I mean, related to shovelware, from, uh, I, I am now darkly obsessed with looking at Nintendo's downloads press Oh, release. yes, like you posted earlier today. In a different way than I have been in the past, because usually there's, I mean, like, I don't know, like, the, the, the copy for these, like, used to be a lot funnier, but it's still, like, 
they try. I, I, I applaud Nintendo. Uh, I mean, you know VR. the one person who writes those, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he um, has a he has a fun time. Yeah. But, I sometimes tweet at him being like, are you for real? And he just says yes. <laughs> um, but, but with the list, so what were the four games that, that oh, you knew about? I would need to pull up the image. One second, I'll pull up I know, my I know mine was uh, but Alphadia Neo, because that's one of the Chemco. Yeah, Alphadia RPGs. Neo, because Chemco um, sends all this shit. You know, Arcade Archives Galaga. Yep, I knew um, that. Any uh, Escape. Visual, I knew, uh, that, and I knew that one I didn't know, and I knew Dusk. I know yeah, any du escape. Dusk, Dusk, and Vengeful Guardian Moonrider, because that's gotcha. the, uh, the, the the folks who did. Uh, what was that? That like OK Contra like game that came out a couple years ago? I forget the name of it. Oh yeah, Blazing yeah. Chrome. Yes. No. The um, I know Nescape because the developers of uh, Garbage Pail Kids NES were helping to promote that. Because they, uh, okay. NES, yeah. it's an NES game on modern consoles. That would make sense. Um, do you think? Do you get the sense that we're done with games that put Mii's front and center? No, we'll go look at Miitopia and Switch Sports. Yeah, those both of those it games is... sold too well. Yeah, even if I mean, I mean, yeah, Miitopia. I remember. I think when Miitopia got announced um... for 3DS or Switch. Uh, for Switch. Yeah. For, for 3DS, it made sense. Because um, that was also one, I think, that came out in Japan like six months before it came out to America. Yes. Or something to that effect. Um, but on Switch, I, at first, I was like, this, like, why? Why are they doing this? And then I realized that it hits a demographic that wasn't being as, like, hit upon on Switch. And then it pretty quickly and quietly just sold a million copies. Oh, yeah. And it also probably wasn't a... I mean, not to not to you know put anything down on the work of Grezzo, who ported that game to Switch, but like probably wasn't a huge lift overall. No, um, they didn't add that much, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's a process that Grezzo was familiar with of kind of that 3DS to HD console pipeline. Yep. I mean, yes, uh, Mii's are pretty front and center in Switch Sports, in so much as. That is what a lot of people played with. Yeah. All right, so that, that's Pilot Wings Resort. I'm not going to belabor it. Um, but I... I like I, this I like this game a whole lot. Oh, yeah, it's very good. I am not, like, closing it out because it's not good. I'm closing it out for, almost because it is okay. good, and I could pl keep playing it. <laughs> All right, I, Super I, Nintendo. Uh, I, gave, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Oh, Super Nintendo. Is there... Uh, not on the not on that sheet, but again, there should be. Like, I'll I'll do that at some point. Uh, you should assume, for the sake of pure theory, what if every single Super Nintendo Mo game that ever Hawk shipped and headphone jack? Oh God! <laughs> you had you had that too fast. Um, uh, the reason why, it's a game that like weirdly comes up more often than I'd ever expect. It was it was a game that probably. Might have been 10 years ago. I was hanging out with a friend that I hadn't seen in a while, and he's like, I found this Super Nintendo game. I played it a lot as a kid, and like it was like a dollar. Um, so so I so I bought it. I'm just gonna give it to you. This was like out of nowhere, and he yeah. just gave me a copy of Mohawk and Headphone Jack, and he was like, We're we're gonna play it later after we drink a little bit. Um and and yeah, that game's bizarre. Bizarre. Yes, it is. Definitely like a game on drugs. Um, there it is. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I'll share it with you on Discord. Options. Jump A, B, Leap. Spike Y, X, Explode. Code. Credits. Oh, yeah. T Toy Dash Headquarters. Yep. It was just like the weird dude. And, oh, man. What a weird game. Just that jump. That jump animation is haunting. Yes. What if motion sickness were a game? <laughs> I apologize to anyone that might be motion sick watching. But yeah, it's the way that builds up momentum. Yeah. It's that jump when, when that little... 
disturbing man thing flips over. Yeah, the more controlled jump at least exists, but... Right? Did you just jump through that wall? Sure! Now I, <laughs> now I have a wheel. <laughs> Collision on this looks terrible. <laughs> it is really bad. Great, I just melted into a putty. Uh, yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, give me the wheel. If I had to give this any credit, um, it, I'm not gonna say the music's good, but it's definitely a, a vibe. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is just a game on drugs. Yep. <laughs> Apparently, I died. This does feel like an alien was described what a video game is. And then they tried to make one. Oh, yeah. Somebody was like, you jump in it. And then you there's platforms. What if the platforms just continually rotated and you didn't know which end up was up? This is... I... How, so how was this after some beers? Um, it was disturbing. Um, I bet it was. I don't was. think I got too far into this game. Now, now I want to look to see what 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 is what happened to the people who made this game? Solid software. Uh oh, I was oh. gonna say I know what happened to the people who published this game. Yeah. Um. So this is uh I believe it's got ties to Bubsy, which of course makes, it does. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. No, all of this is Screams Bubsy. Yeah. Let's see. D. Scott Williamson is listed as a programmer on it. What's his, what's his credits? Uh, this is part is great because I have no idea how to get back to where I was. <laughs> it's a yeah, shame this, this was, never made this it was draw. A, yeah. a, game, a game that the creators of Bubsy worked on after Bubsy. Yeah... But and before Bubsy 3D. One of the programmers, yeah, one of the programmers on this game apparently worked on The Conduit. Well, then we know this game is worth. <laughs> I jumped over them. Oh, yeah, great. I try to click on there. solid. I try to click on solid software on Wikipedia and it just takes me to the first Bubsy game. Amazing. All right. Okay. <laughs> what if I disable look ahead? What does that do? Oh, that makes the jumps feel terrible. Oh, no. The jumps felt terrible, but what if you they didn't see worse. where you were going? They're like, oh, this is an effort to curtail motion sickness after they got told your entire game yeah. causes motion sickness. It's like the equivalent of the uh, the, the pad that THQ made. But Why do I have for... wheel wings? All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Thank you. That was a wild fall. Um, I'm going to spin the wheel now. Have that scheme and button VR would kill me. Oh, tear maker. All right. First, I'm going to share this with you. Uh, and then I'm going to share it with the stream. And then we're going to figure out what your tear maker journey is going to be. All right. Uh, so this is what we do. First, we go to categories and then we find a category. Now we could go video games. We could rank video games because that's pretty standard. Or we there's so much hyper specific shit. Mm. I'm sorry. What is ranking civil? Okay. It yeah, I, I will. I will leave if you <laughs> click on top dictators. Yeah. Uh huh. 
It's gonna close that one the fuck out. Um, <laughs> th- there's a lot, and usually, you should <laughs> like. I feel like the ideal middle ground is you know a little bit about it, but yeah. you don't know a lot. So I'm thinking Dragalia Lost. That works. Um, Dragalia Lost Waifus, Dragalia Lost Adventurers, Dragalia Lost Characters. <laughs> it's going to reveal that huh? I haven't played this game for longer than like 20 minutes well, since shortly can't. after it came out. I know. Now I can't. I can't even do any last minute research. It's dead. Um. Oh my lord. All right. We're making three tiers. Uh, we're gonna delete a bunch of these tiers. We don't need an A. We don't need middle grounds. No, 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 no. We need three tiers. We need, um, top tier, no question. We need middling. And then we need, what the fuck is this? (laughs) <laughs> Th- those are our three metrics. All right. Uh, there is you do. There will not be a middle ground created. So that, that that works. Everything is either top tier, middling, or what the fuck is this? First, so some of these look like they're the same character with a different. A hundred percent. All right. <laughs> All right. First, default ass main ca- player character. Well, that seems middling as fuck. All right. What about? Uh, him with the power of light and dragon bombs at his side. Um. Uh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, okay. What about Elisan? Uh, middling. What about her with a trident? Uh, top tier, no question. Let's go tridents. What about her with another a trident and also a Halloween outfit? Um, what the fuck is this? We're getting into waifu territory. What about her bridal? Uh, no, Ellison? no. Put that in the ground. What about Ranzel? Uh, um, you know, so what are the next two with him? Is that, that, is that, is that him with? That's him, Summer, and then that's him, uh, Awakened. That's basically like his top tier version. Okay, let's put his top tier version in top tier, no question. Let's put his normal version in middling and whatever the fuck that summer outfit is in what the fuck is this? Um, here, if I search summer Ranzel, uh, if we go here, this is actually a way where I can show you more. This is summer Ranzel. I mean, he looks like he's just down to have a good time. Yeah. Um, yeah, now let's put that top tier. All right. He looks like somebody I'd find at a white Lotus. Oh yeah. Yeah, no. So this this is actually great. I'm going to pull up just adventurers. Oh my god. This does not <laughs> sort by picture. This sorts by name. So this will be great if... Uh, oh, we can sort by element. So then that creates further categories. Okay. Uh, this is Clea. Um, um. I will pull her up, I guess. Uh, Cleo, excuse me. Um... What the fuck is that? Uh, this is... Seems more hair than person. Uh, this is her Gala Awakened form. Let's do middling for that. That seems a little bit more normal. Okay. Uh, this is... Her Dragon Yule Christmas version. Uh... Let's go middling. And then... Her... Uh, summer variation. What the fuck is this? Um. Ah, oh, there's so many characters in this. Yeah, hang on. It is. It is such a shame that, that like all of this content is gone. Yeah, and it's just like the the, the concept of Dragalia just did not work. It, um, I mean, it it did work, but it, it did just work. It, didn't, it was very it, popular. They just actively chose not to monetize it yeah. and shut it down for not making money. Yeah, like, it really did seem like it had the potential to be something that could go, grow beyond that mobile game. 
Yes. And they kneecapped it seemingly at every every chance they got it. I mean, it, it's. I mean, wasn't it? Um. Oh God, I keep on blanking on the guy who's the Furukawa, the um, mm-hmm. the current Nintendo president. Like, wasn't this like one of his first projects as president? Was this uh, game? It was kind of a holdover from Kimishima. Okay. Okay. Because it does, it, like, it does seem like this was a game that was supposed to be very important, and then by the time it came out, they were like, maybe we just don't care about mobile games anymore. Yeah, it it sucks. Like, not not did, this did, game, but like what happened yeah. to it. Did did Furukawa just basically do his version of the the Zaslav HBO Max calling? <laughs> Is that what happened with Dragalia Lost? Uh. Partially that, partially Psy Games just wanted to move on to another project. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, Nintendo was clearly not interested in Psy Games, was just managing 90, like, basically everything but the localization and the voice acting was Psy yeah. Games, at, like, yep. after a certain extent. And the, the localization and the voice acting was 8 4. And Nintendo yeah. was cutting checks. Yep. And then Nintendo was like, why are we cutting checks? And Psy Games was like, why are we putting all this effort in? And then they shut it down. And it breaks my heart because this game was incredible. All yeah. right, this next character is named Alex. They're an assassin. They're also like 12. That seems cool. Top tier. Uh, then we have uh, Awakened, or the Gala assassin. In Middling. A white Middling, great. Uh, here we have Hunter Bunny Boy. Uh, what the fuck is that? Uh, then we have him, uh, Summer Outfit. What the fuck is that? And we have him Awakened. Middling. Uh, then we have... Mim, who is a fire dragon who also wants to sleep with and marry the main character. Uh, no. What What the fuck is this? Uh, then there's her, but more scantily clad. What the fuck is this? Uh, then there's Leif, who is a soldier. Uh, I, I have a memory of having him at my party, so let's go top tier. Great. Uh, bunny girl. No. What is what the fuck is this? Uh, bunny girl, but dressed up for the Bon Odori. Nope. Uh, automaton that is trying to cope with fe- having feelings. Ah, uh, that sounds great. Top tier. Uh, generic adventurer. Middling. Uh, I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of these where I'm just gonna say I don't know. <laughs> um, Look at how many characters. Where... I don't know all of yeah. their backstories. I'm not, and it's also like. I can. I, I'm trying to zoom in on this as much as possible, but there's a limit to it, and yeah. I kind of like that because it just makes me like look at. The, let's let's put that one at uh, middling. Great. What about this one? Uh, uh, what the fuck is this? And but let's put that that motherfucker with the hat. Put him top tier. Let's go. Hell yeah. Uh, what about this motherfucker with the hat? Uh, sure. Uh, the hats are great. Uh, what about uh, uh bridal? Someone. Uh. No. Just a white No, what the fuck is this? Uh, what about, like, this ten-year-old? Um, uh, nope. Uh, what about this motherfucker with a hat that, and a that's collar? A, yeah, that's a good hat. Let's put it up here. Uh, what about this not Monster Hunter character? Uh, middling. What about this character OC actually from the Monster Hunter event? Um, let's do top tier. I, I like the collabs in this game. Even if I wound up not really playing any of them, I like that they existed. Uh... What about this dude who has some tips, like red tips, I guess? Uh, what the fuck is this? Uh, she looks panicked. Uh, middling. I, I feel like if I went either way, that, that character would just get uh, have anxiety. Uh, what about this character? Uh, um, let's go middling. Uh, two ver- variations of her. Uh, put them both in what the fuck is this? Great. One of those is actually, like, mechanically was like a triple s tier for the entire ver- duration of the game <laughs> so that's amazing uh what about this dude um middling uh what about bunny boy with blue hair uh no what about this priestess uh middling i don't want to piss priest? off uh put that in middling i don't want to piss off the religious zealots uh i that's so that's why you didn't play this game Oh, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of fighting against the church. Um, what about this dude? Um, purple hair, don't care. What the fuck is this? Uh, what about him? He looks uh, like he know. has Kemco protagonist energy. Yeah, yeah. Put that. Put that in mid link. Okay. 
Um, once my mouse decides that it is going to start working again. Uh -oh. oh, no. It's just, uh, I need to turn it off and on again. It just lost sync, I think. It's just a wireless mouse. There we go. Middling. What about this, uh, religious servant? Uh, top, top tier. I like the cut of that hat. That person's got an eye patch. Put them top tier. You got it. Uh, what about him? Uh, a middling. What about him? Is that a is that is that an earring? Uh, that's a headband. Okay, then then no. What the fuck is this? If it was an earring, sure. Uh, what about this elf dude? Um, let's put a middling. What about him? Uh, I like the way that that character from the the view that I'm looking at it looks like uh, they don't have a face outside of slits for eyes. So put that in top tier. Fuck yeah. Uh, what about uh one of your is main that characters? Titus? Old? No, it's one of your main characters' older brothers. Uh, put that. Uh, you know what? Uh, older brothers can f off. Put that. What the fuck is this? Great. Uh, what about Santa version of that same character? Uh, put that in. What the fuck is this? Uh, what about this <laughs> fucking... I don't know anything about these next... Everything... 25 characters. Oh, no. Everything <laughs> in this top row currently. So just... Um, you can rapid fire. So let's let's just... I'm not going to think about it too hard. Great. Put that one in top tier because it looks like it's the only person of color in that entire row. Hell yeah. <laughs> there's, there's more coming up. But yes. Yeah, yeah, but I was just looking at the context of that row. Um, put the next two into what the fuck is this? Then the two after that into middling. Then it looks like those people got some hats. Put yeah. those next next four into top tier. Why You're not? Put the maid into top tier. Sure. Great. Going. I'm the rule of hats. If I can tell that they're wearing a hat. Um. Uh, put that next one into what the fuck is this? That looks that that I I don't think that person I can't tell if they actually have cat ears, but they might. They actually have cat ears. Okay. Yes. yes then put that in what the fuck is this? Uh, these are two little fairy girls. Put them in what the fuck is this? Uh, this is another Monster Hunter collab character. Uh, put that in top tier. Uh, um. The next one Purple. I know is, like, well, is a long way away, so keep going. All right. Um, let's do the next one, middling. The one after that, what the fuck is this? Um, those next two, put them in middling. I think the next one has a hat, so put that in top tier. I don't wait. I don't like the way the next one, the next two that that guy's hair looks. So oh, put you those mean Rex? What the fuck is this? Rex from Zelda it... Chronicles. 10. Oh, oh, was... absolutely. Put that, put that motherfucker in the dirt. No, it is not literally, but if it ha extremely has Rex energy. <laughs> um, put this, put this bearded fellow in top tier. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna rename top tier. No question. Open parentheses hat. <laughs> um. All right, continuing on. Um, that person looks like they have a lot of hair. Put it in middling. Uh, um, that looks like uh, some braids. Yeah. Um, uh, what the fuck is this? It has a hat though. Oh, it does have a hat. Okay, uh, put it up to middling. Okay. That's not a silver bullet. It's just gonna, you know, it's gonna uh, put you up a tier. Mm -hmm. Um, that looks like a headband. Put that in middling. And that next one also looks like a headband. Let's also put that in middling. Uh, um, priestess. Uh, put those in, into middling. Then that looks like another Monster Hunter collab. Uh, it Can looks like that? one, but it's not. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's put it into top tier anyway. <laughs> There's so many fucking characters. Yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's more are just popping up. No, unfortunately. Um. Uh. Put that. Put the next. You know, let's start doing this in bulk. The next yeah. five into middling. Great. Uh, two, three, four, five. Uh, 
five. Then I'm going to put the next two into what the fuck is this? The, the two after it, the, the, the next, yep. the next three, put that into top tier. Okay. Um, basically because I can't even tell if those are people. They are. Everyone here is a person. <laughs> um, those blonde character, uh, the next two, put them into, what the fuck is this? The two after that, put it into middling. Yeah, so this is, uh, the trend of this game, is every time there's a person of color, uh, like, these are like, what if they were an Egypt trope? Or, like, this other character that may as well have been <laughs> fucking called Hawkeye, that is like, what if Native American trope? Oh, God. It's like... It's like, ah, um, you, I like you, game, but, oh, you were made in Japan. Yup. Um, let's put the next four into, what the fuck is this? Then the next two, uh, the next, the next four into middling. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go... The next two into what the fuck is this? Um, does that character have a horn? The second one up. Yes. Uh, put that into top tier, and the the one before it. Um, put that into middling. Okay. And is that the? Wasn't there a Mega Man collab? Is that the? Yes. There's a Mega Man collab. Okay. Have we gotten there yet or no? No. Jesus Christ. No, Mega Man is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows away. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, uh, next two into middling. Okay. Um. Uh, I do like the color green, so let's put those next two characters into middling. <laughs> then let's put that variation of that character into what the fuck is this? Um, that person looks like they have a V-neck. What the fuck is this? Um, that person doesn't have... Uh, looks like they, they were missing shoulders to their shirt, so I, I don't know. Put it in middling. Um, <laughs> need to take a break from this at some point. Jesus Christ! Yeah, we'll we'll take a break. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. Uh, Feel free to do in bulk. Yeah, yeah. So let's do. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The next six into middling. You got it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's put the next five into top tier. Okay. One. It is ha getting harder and harder to move things into top tier. Three. <laughs> four. Five. Um... The next, the next six, the next seven put into middling. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the next, the next four put into top tier. Yeah, I heard that Marth character was from some Japanese exclusive war game. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that guy came over. I heard it got delayed because of 9-11, I think. Mm, mm-hmm. Uh, reduce the page zoom and force Neil to decide at that sizing. Unfortunately, uh, that's not going to make a huge difference on the Discord view that Neil yeah. is using. Yeah. Like, this Neil's is not, not using the like, stream. Um, the next three put into middling... That little creature character. It's uh, a vegetable that uh sc that wants that desperately wants to be boiled into water, but everyone is like, "What? Well, that's, that's fucked top up. Why would I ever do tier. that?" It is like its name is Pipple, and it's like the best character that Dracal best OC <laughs> in all of Dracalia. Um, let's do the next. 
the next three into what the fuck is this? I don't know if that person is. It looks like they're wearing a backwards hat. I don't think they actually are. But put that in the top tier. <laughs> Great. It's not backwards, but they are in fact wearing a hat. Yes. Um, then let's do the next. The next seven into middling. Two. Yeah, like for for people watching this, like yeah, I'm looking at this on my. I mean, my laptop monitor isn't super tiny, but the, I am like staring at it like I'm like I'm. <laughs> going blind <laughs> yeah we can kinda... we can pause now if you want there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve rows left plus two <laughs> uh don't worry we haven't even gotten into persona or most of fire emblem or Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> And how many... Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> um, we can take a break. Unless the next, unless we spin the wheel and then it says Tear Maker, which twice we're coming right the fuck back in. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, we can come back to this, but... I just gotta give my damn eyes a break. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna hide that. And then pull up the wheel and we're gonna spin again. And you know what, GX, uh, if I could tell that that guy had a scar, <laughs> then maybe. Uh, all right. We are doing We Wear. All right. So please feel free. To... Let me let me skim through this. Yeah, I'm connecting my Wii remote. Um, all right, I have, I have one, but I, I'm going to... Oh man, so you already played Eco Shooter. <laughs> already played Eco Shooter. Um, I yeah no I I, I need to I was gonna say one earlier on in the alphabet but I kind of just want to see what else. Uh, uh so, and you already played Maboshi's Arcade, which is yeah, yes. absolutely ten out of ten. That game is incredible. I love it so much. Yeah, that is absolutely one of the best ones. Um Were you gonna I'm... fucking pick a game that starts with a three digit number? No. Okay. No, I am going I am going to take uh Burger Time World Tour. Burger Time World Tour. There's no way that thing uses the fucking nunchuck, so I'm gonna take the nunchuck out. There's no way this is not Wii Remote held sideways, right? I'm I, like I think it, I think it is. Um. All right, I'm gonna. Share this with you. This audio is something else. Okay, what are my options? Why are, how is this how the sliders work? That's that's hell. We're in hell. Wait, no. That's a fucking lot check failure. You're not allowed to squish the Wii remote like that. <laughs> Fuck you. Also, who made that A button and those 1 and 2 buttons? That's not what the controller looks like. Wow, okay. So pick up and throw- I'm glad I'm looking at this. Is A button with the Wii Remote held sideways? That's a nightmare. Uh, jump and pepper, and then B is power up? Yeah, in this game, I believe... Um, well, this was Monkey Paw Games. That was, I mean, a, a terrible name for a... Uh... Uh, but Monkey Paw Games published this. I do remember playing this at an E3. Great. Um, I will say the more recent... Wasn't there a recent Burger Time game? I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, by Exe. Or Exe published it. Yeah. It wasn't... Uh, I think that was fine. Um, I do really like the original arcade game a whole lot. 
Um, I don't think it's like incredible, but it's just, it's, it's one that I enjoy playing that I played a lot when I was younger. But I, I remember being kind of excited for this game and, and then not. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird how that works sometimes. It was, I mean, I, I guess, I guess theme, theme of, of the, of the, uh, theme of the night is, is developers that uh, are, are near us. Um, is this was made by Frozen Codebase based out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Um, they closed a long time ago, but I remember they made that really good, uh, roller derby game on WiiWare. Yes, they did. And this is not a good game that they made that roller derby game though. Very good. Yeah. Great. The Death Burger. Oh, great. I love not being <laughs> able to react fast enough. Like that camera is actively working against you. Yeah. Trying to make, it's, a, it's a world. It's on like a sphere. Yeah, I do not understand what, why. You're going to space to make burgers. It's Elon's future. God. I love when the end of level sting is just the music slowed down. Uh... <laughs> that man does. That man looks like a rejected psychonauts NPC. Well, apparently, Monkey Paw Games worked on, uh, or at least at one point, we're going to assist with Double Fine Adventure. So, mm. somehow, that's a tie. Bizarre. But this does just remind me, I mean, it is that era of... I was on the ladder, you fucker. Yes? Uh, it's, it is the era of companies trying to revive these old arcade games and it just being terrible. Oh! Partially because there there was no real money in making these games. Cur yeah, 100%. Or, like or there was no incentive to put money into it because it was either it was going to be carnival games and sell a boatload despite costing very little or it was just going to tank. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the thing about, like, WiiWare and XBLA games is, like, they only made sense if you could make them on a real budget. Yeah. Um, because there was just such a hard limit to how much a thing could sell unless you would, like, basically strike gold. Yeah, and then which... you have, like, I mean, like, Capcom was able to do it with, like, Mega Man, like, like, Popular yeah. existing franchises were yeah. able to like be like, okay, we finally found a place to make our game that like retail. Fuck you. That like retail does not yeah. justify anymore. Dark but, Void Zero. Um, I think that did relatively well on DSiWare for what it was. I mean, relative to DSiWare games, yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. It's it sold two digits of copies, so it did better than most DSiWare games. Yes. But did it make? It, did Nintendo issue a payout? Is another question. Yeah, yeah. That game they probably did. Um, for the the thing that I've always wondered is for all of the um games that the Czech Republic put out on WiiWare, did Nintendo ever pay out the Czech Republic? Uh, did any of those games ever? Uh, hey Matt. Comcast decided your hey, stream is over. How are things over here? Well, we were just playing Burger Time World Tour on WiiWare after Neil got halfway through ranking every Tregalia lost character and then his eyes began to hurt. Yeah. Um, yeah that's, uh, th then we played some Pilot Wings. Um, oh, yeah. Pilot Wings Resort. And, yeah, and then we tried to play 1 versus 100 on DS. Uh, which did not work for a variety nope. of weird reasons. Um, All right. I think we have. A, I'm up for another WiiWare game because that one didn't last very long. Um, Do you want to pull another quick back. one? Uh, uh, Nick's Quest. Oh yeah. You want? And you very know what, curious mark. how that one holds up. 
Can you mark that? It was one that I really liked. Yeah. Um, um and and I just I, I marked as, as has been streamed, unless you don't want me to. No, or... please and thank you. Can you put a four next to burger time? Sure. Thank you. Higher than Kokoto. It's not fucking garbage, but yeah, no, this, the next quest did come to PC like at the time. Yeah. Er, yeah, this was a game, my first E3 that I ever went to, 2009. They had one booth where they just had a bunch of Weebear games, and the demo for Next Quest was really good. Uh, they did put out a public demo be because of that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. I already know uh, Greek mythology. And I remember a lot of this game came out and people being like, they should make a Kid Icarus like this. Because people just kept saying they should make a Kid Icarus like blank. Uh, yeah. For like the entire Wii generation because Pit was in Brawl and no other reason. Yep. And it turns out that Kid Icarus Uprising is probably the best kind of Kid Icarus game that could come out. Because I don't think I really want to play like side-scrolling platformer Kid Icarus. Oh yeah, no. Even if, even if the Game Boy game was was totally fine, like that that wasn't the strength of that. The strength of that was like the music's great. Pretty much. They should make a Kid Icarus like Yakuza. <laughs> I mean, Captain Falcon, Yakuza, let's go. I could get this on mobile? Sure. <laughs> Nick's Quest on mobile. That sounds like something that would have been put out 10 years ago. Yep. Let's see. Zach Miller reviewed it. He gave it an 8 out of 10. Yep, that sounds right. Stunning achievement on WiiWare. Oh, I mean, yeah, no. This is a WiiWare 10, right? Like, yeah, yeah. In t like, on the scale of WiiWare... Uh, I don't... I've... Alex and Matt have been ranking all of the WiiWare games. I, yeah, I'm happy that, that they're getting educated. Yeah, it really has been educational for them, I think. But I don't know if they've ranked... They've almost certainly ranked this, because they're almost done. They're, like, at the tail end of WeWare. Yeah, and this was pretty early on WeWare. I mean, this was, yeah. I think, 2000... Yeah, they just, 2009? Yeah, they just did Bitrip Flux. So oh, okay, like, yeah, that was near the end. Um, Yeah, I'll be curious at the end here to see, like, what they ranked it. Especially remembering that they did a lot of this just based on trailers. And I think they just saw this and were like, wow, it looks like a real game. And then just gave a number. Yeah. And guess what? It does look like a real game. Yeah. You're still reeling from the first of the Pearl Harbor trilogy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were had a lot of war crimes on it, it turns out. They learned it from you, Alex. Uh, remember the fucking... Um, Military Madness Nectaris from Hudson. Yeah. Yeah, that trailer was just like, the prisoners are revolting. Put them in yeah. their place. Yeah. That game has like the worst fucking politics, and then Alex kept wanting to give it a high score because it looked like a real game, and that's where the <laughs> war cry Alex supports war crimes jokes come <laughs> from. You thought it was tongue in cheek? No. You think Hudson's tongue-in-cheek? Go look at the war crimes they've committed with the Mario Party series. I did, uh, I played some Mario Party 2 because because my kid wanted to play it. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, that game is very more charming than I remember and how, like, in every land, everybody dresses up. Yes. And it's like, it is Pirate Bowser. Uh, then they would never do that again. Nope. Um, all right, yeah, I am looking up what they ranked this. Um, yeah, they're currently in 2011. They both gave this a 7. Granted, without having played it, but just seeing it, they both gave it a 7. Um, uh, this is definitely a game that I know if I would play it now, or, like, play through it, I'd probably be like, eh. Yeah, the, le the level layout, like, is not very interesting. But, like, hey, 
this is a real ass video game, and that yeah, is like top tier on WiiWare. It is it is such a weird mindset to think back to like being a Nintendo heavy gamer during the era of the Wii because it's not it's not like like because I don't think this game is bad, but there definitely was a little bit of like this is the best we're gonna get on their download service. Yes. Um. So there 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 are definitely games that I think like probably you know if we're looking at it from a review lens got nines that are probably at best an eight if you were to look at it now but times were different the the rules were different yes um no so uh yes the next game that matt and alex will rank um will be gabriel uh gabriel's ghostly groove monster mix by natsume i did i play that i think i definitely played that i don't think i reviewed it i might have uh, cause yeah, they're in 2011. Um. <sighs> Alex is give sharing some of his rubric after having seen all of WiiWare in a very short amount of time. Was it? Yeah, I, I, GX just pointed out in the chat that let's not forget that it was an era when Nintendo decided what your game was worth. Oh, yeah. Was yeah. that? Nintendo chose yeah. all the prices. That's so fucking weird. Yeah, Nintendo would be like, your game looks like a five. And then some of these games, they would decide it looks like it's like ten it's like ten dollars too expensive, and then you're like, wait, what the fuck happened there? And then they never had to pay you for it. Because you didn't <laughs> sell enough copies. Uh good lord. Yeah, we were. Hey, what we were games did I review? Um I reviewed eight WiiWare games by my count. Great, what were they? Um, first, first one. This is like I guess you know what this was also not when I this was like my I was a normal human being who did not go suicidal reviewer yet. Great. Um, my first WiiWare review was Maboshi's Arcade. Fuck yeah! Which I you gave it. I gave it an eight, and that's one that I think that game has aged like a fine wine. That yeah, is so that good. out of like all of your reviews from that era, that I'm like you, sh like that was just where you were in your life. Nah, that game deserves yeah. such high praise in terms of like WiiWare games that I would want to play for like at least an hour in 2023. Like top tier. Yeah. Yeah, and um. Let's see, what else do I got? Um, uh, Let's Catch. Oh, yeah? Which I gave a seven. Uh, that's another one that I, I probably... Well, that's a game that I think is probably... It is a seven out of ten game, probably at best. But the bizarreness of that game is something that sticks with me. Oh, yeah. Um, and I did have some fun with, like, the, the hot potato multiplayer game. Um, but just the whole, like... A story about like a kid dealing with his parents getting divorced and there's a baseball player who's like secretly an fbi agent and the last level is you having a catch with an alien on the moon yep um it's nah, it's the best was... the best thing that yuji naka has made <laughs> his entire career yep well he's made some fun <laughs> news stories <laughs> Uh, some of the Street Pass games might have been okay. I forget what ones that Pro Base specifically did. Uh, I think they did the fishing one that no one liked. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe, maybe not. I think they uh, also did the Monster Mansion one. I, I like the Monster Mansion one. I do, I'm not 100% on that, though. And I, I know they contributed, like, two games to We Play Motion. Yeah, and I forget which ones, which ones they specifically did. I know there was... I said I did like a developer history. Maybe it was um, Indie Zero might have helped out with We Play Motion as oh, well. Oh yeah, Indie Zero yeah. did um, the Skipping Stone one. Prope did. Or no, or Indie Zero. I think Indie. I think Indie Zero did the Skipping Stone one. Gotcha. Because I did when Sushi Striker came out. Uh, I did a like retrospective on the history of Indie Zero, and I remember I I, I had to look for footage. Yes. We play motion. And yeah. Specifically, the games that they they made. Yeah, we play motion was bizarre because, or is is interesting like that. Iwata asks is almost more interesting than the game. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, they just were like, what if we got, uh, like 
five to six different partner studios to go each individually basically say, do you have any ideas for Wii Motion Plus that aren't worth making into a full game, but you want money to go make? Yeah. And that they just made that a collection. It's and, such a cool, like, like I don't think We Play Motion is incredible, but I just love the mindset behind it. A hundred percent, I will say, having uh, replayed it um, two week, two to three weeks ago with my wife, uh, like, just to bounce through, they really front-loaded all of the best ones. Like, all <laughs> the ones, you have to unlock everything past, like, the first four, and, like, everything past that is forgettable. It's very funny. <laughs> it's like, so oh, the other... Mm -hmm. My, my lowest WiiWare score was the next one, uh, Ant Nation. Which oh, hell I yeah. Do, I, I think I reviewed that when I was on vacation with my parents or something. Oh. Um, and I remember, like, bringing my Wii with me to, like, North Carolina or wherever and playing this game and being like, this is bad. Um, <laughs> and then I I did, I reviewed three Bit Trip games. Fuck yeah, which ones? Uh, I, gave, I gave Core an 8, I gave Fate a 7, I gave Flux an 8.5. Uh, core probably holds up as uh, one of my favorites, but mostly because I'm just a sucker for difficult button-based rhythm games that are precise. Yeah, okay, okay. I, I was trying to think of which one, because Flux, Flux is the last one, I think. Yeah, Flux is beat, but backwards. Yeah, yeah. Flux is good. Um, Fate. Is Fate the one where you're... It's a shooter. Controlling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the on uh, yeah. That one was okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Come on. Rage of the Gladiator, which I think is a... It's a Wii Motion ripple? Plus. It's a Wii Motion Plus punch-out game, yes. Yeah, which I gave a 7, and I definitely have a memory of of people giving me a lot of shit for that. I could probably dig up some, like, Tumblr blog posts of people uh, giving me a lot of crap for giving oh, that game a 7 out of 10. Hell yeah. Um, cause that's what people do. They've been doing it for a long time, and they will do it forever. Uh, the last one is Fluidity, uh, which I gave a 9.5. That game rules. Did Nintendo send you a, a bottle of water with the label ripped off, too? I believe so. Good. Good. Um, I just wanted... I was telling that story on the uh, NWR Twitch channel, and people were, like, stunned. And there, I was like... There's some yeah. weird stuff happened in that era. Yeah, Nintendo uh, wanted people to pay attention to games. They also, like, went to bat and sent out a mailer for Moto Heroes, a game that they did not make or publish. Yeah, yeah. Did I, um, um, you know what, fun... fun. Oh, uh, no, actually, I don't, I don't know if, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait to tell. There's one story here that, uh, get me another time. Um, wait for the Statute of Limitations. It's, it's some NWR dirt from the from weird PR stuff that wound up being awkward. Um, right. But I will... Um, oh, wait. oh, Fluidity. Yes. Uh, so Fluidity on WiiWare. I, I think that game really... I think it's still very good. Uh, Spin Cycle on 3DS. Yes. A oh. game that I believe I also reviewed and was a little disappointed by it because that was a 3DS download title yep. where uh, the like Fluidity's cool thing was that it was kind of a metroidvania e world Spin cycle was individual bite-sized levels. Yes, and that was always the bummer about that. I do remember, like, I wound up like going back and forth with the the, the main guy at what was it? Uh, he's working on Plucky Plucky Squire. Oh, uh, it was that curve. Yeah, yeah, it was that curve. Um, but it was the whole thing about like, yo, man, uh, he just told me he's like, I made the game that Nintendo wanted me to make. Yes. Like, essentially basically being like, if I, like, he did not say this directly, but heavily implied it, about, like, I would have just made a follow-up to the very good WiiWare game that I made, but that's that I was, what, what I was given money to do. And seeing that in context of the games that he would make after that, uh, the Stealth Think games. Yep. Like, he definitely, like, he, he kind of made what he, I mean, it's not like, you know, you're controlling a spy and not water. Um, but, like, Stealth Think kind of develops into, like, more of a sprawling open-ended game similar to fluidity and not so much like spin cycle yeah all right we spawn again and we hit gamecube so please pull up the list oh there is a gamecube list um, alex be honest ooh. did the how much did the bottle of water impact your review i uh, did give it a 9.5 so maybe it did <laughs> uh for me no comment <laughs> uh, um Oh. <laughs> Yo, 
You know what? Actually, just because I want to, it's more that I want to see if this game holds up in my in my memory, and uh, I can also shower praise on you because you helped me. Uh, you you put me into contact with people who worked on X Men Legends. Oh yes. Um, and that that is still uh, so the first X Men Legends, or if that I mean that one or one or two. Either, I'm gonna pull up do. one. Um. Yeah, because I mean that X Men Legends feature that I did around when Marvel Ultimate Alliance three came out was uh, like I don't think that many people actually read it. It was just a really fun thing to do because, like, I, I think I, I kick off that feature by saying about how like I remember reading the Game Informer where it was revealed and being so stoked because it was just like I was a dork who liked RPGs and also a dork who liked X Men, so this was a match made in heaven. Yeah. Um, and I, like, the, this game came out, I devoured it. And then being able to, um, I mean, like, uh, Aaron Aaron and Allison uh, both. Yep. Uh, like, I, th I think they came on for Legends 2 and Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But I, I wound up tracking down the director of this. Uh, I think, yeah, Pat Pat Lipo. Yep. Um, uh, And got to go back and forth with him about it. And it was just really cool being able to talk to a person who worked on a game that, like, was legitimately meaningful to my childhood. Yeah, no, 100%. Oh, I am going to change the, uh... I'm sorry. Game music composition by Womb Music? Hmm. I just realized I never set the category, Twitch category for, um... Uh... What's it? Uh, for Nick's Quest, but that's fine. Um, yeah. I'm just going to back out of there. Begin story. Uh, yeah, Raven Software game. Once again, the okay, loose theme of developers that are near us. Yes. Menace. It's a concern of worldwide proportions. This scene took place in Russia two weeks ago as a young mutant stood in defiance of the military. And in the Far East, the authorities attempted to quell an uprising at a mutant camp, but they had little success. We interrupt this newscast with a breaking story. A RVN. Young woman named Allison Cressmere was identified as a mutant. The Genetic Research and Security Organization is now responding to that report, but a mob has formed and tempers are flaring. Help! Somebody help me! Mom! Mom! I'm not a mutant! I, I swear I'm not! Mom! Grab the girl and get out! Oh, it's Mystique. How is he hiding anywhere? Voice. <laughs> uh. Uh, what should I put down for next quest? Oh, uh, give it seven. I mean, when it comes down to it at the end of this game, like, this game is just X-Men Diablo. Oh, 100%, but it kind of rules at that. Yeah. And it is something that even if I really, I really did enjoy Marvel the Ultimate Alliance 3, but that does, like, there was a, the like, these first two X-Men Legends games, I think the fact that they weren't trying to, like, they were serving a more specific part of the Marvel Universe. Oh, yeah. I think made these stronger, because, like, I mean, especially when Marvel's Alliance 2... Um, got more into just ripping off Civil War. It was like the at least Marvel Alliance one just went for the like we're gonna touch on everything. Yeah, it's like what's popular, and then two was what's been what's been pushed recently in the comics. Yeah, and then three was what's in the MCU plus a couple of other things. Yep. Yeah, like you did have the X Men, uh, the X Men Mansion, and that. I never, I never wound up playing the uh, the final DLC. Oh, uh, was that and, the one that added Morbius? 
Um, now I think was Morbius in the first one because there were three. There was one oh, yeah. that was there was yeah there was one that uh, like I played some of that because that was like some I think challenge missions that you got like Punisher, Morbius, Blade, maybe a fourth person. <laughs> Deadpool. I think there were four characters. Dead Deadpool, you got. I think Deadpool was a main character, or he was like, uh, okay. if you bought the season pass, you got him. The second, the second season pass added more X Men characters. The third one right. was Fantastic Four and added uh, some story DLC. That's right. Um, also, this game uh, rules. However, uh, the GameCube version maps the uh, the jump button to the Y button on the GameCube controller. That is bizarre. It's because they want to put the two attacks on A and B, and like I can get that, but also it feels like a cardinal sin to make Y jump. Yeah. What does the X button do? Uh, X button is pick up, use, and activate hints. God, oh, that's weird. Yeah, like I can see, like, th that was probably a debate. <laughs> oh, yeah, 100%. Oh my god, that fucking Wolverine. Yeah, every little... What? Where's the level up? Is it just in characters? What? Yeah, I think if you click on him... Is it the start button to trigger it? I, I tried that. I'm gonna hit details. There it is. You have to hit the Y button for details. I'm just gonna hit auto right now. Except there. Yeah, a lot of X and Y. Like, more than almost any game I've ever seen on the GameCube using X and Y. For, like, primary functions. Now I want to check the, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 DLC. Because I remember, I thought, the, I thought the final DLC, like, teased the sequel, but I don't think that's ever happening. No. Um. Because if that game came out a couple months earlier, Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it came out after Endgame. Sure did. Because I think that was a game that was not supposed to come out in July. I think it was supposed to come out in, like, April. Uh, hmm. But it got delayed. Um, yeah, I, my experience playing this, I think it was on Xbox or PS2. It was not the GameCube version. So, like, it's... You this game is very familiar to me, except for the this specific control layout. Yeah. Uh, I also don't re exactly remember Beautiful Joe's control layout. I know, I don't, but it, it's also like anything about weird GameCube control layout, um, because I played so many third-party games. Per, like, if, if there if there was a version of it on GameCube, that's that's where I played it. That mm. I just adapted. <laughs> like, yeah, I ended it, up. It, Nah. I, I, but like I understand whenever anybody's like the GameCube controller is weird. I'm like, no, you're you're right. It's just that it was the weird thing that I got used to. Uh, we all adapted to it back in the day, ex unless you didn't. I I predominantly used PS2, or yeah, P PS2 is my third party uh, box of choice. Uh, GameCube was for Nintendo games. Similar to how Wii was for exclusives and Nintendo games. Um, for me, yeah, I, I, it was, I yeah. Would, it was just the two I was sticks. The, yeah. I was, the, I was the person who played Madden on GameCube. Mm. <laughs> I had, like, uh, several memory cards devoted just to Madden. Hell yeah. I'm sure you were uh, someone who kept arguing to cut the GameCube SKU's favorite person. Yep. Um, yeah, if you only had the GameCube, you had to learn to jump with B in Anniversary Collection. Yeah, absolutely not. I I heard about that, but I was like, absolutely the fuck not. Um, yep. I, yeah, like the, the, it was not the A, B, X, Y on the GameCube controller that fucked with me. It was the C stick. Which I see how they get there after the N64, but really they desperately should have looked at the Dual Shock. It is it is bizarre playing GameCube, like going back to play GameCube games now. Like we actually, um, uh, one of the uh, 
Joel from Nintendo World Report mentioned in our Slack chat that like just asked a question of when you played Mario 64, did you mess around with the camera a lot? Because uh, one of his kids was playing it and his kid is continually messing around with the camera in Mario 64 and he said yeah. it's very disorienting for him to watch. And as someone who has a child that forces him to play Mario 64 often, <laughs> I find myself when I play, especially when I'm playing it on Switch, I'm fiddling with the camera more than I ever did as a kid. Oh yeah. And that's because I've gotten used to like that two stick experience for 3D games. Um, even if like you, there's things that I want the camera to do in Super Mario 64 that are impossible because that game uh, did not have you know years of games to build a 3D camera off of. I oh, yeah. still find myself futzing with the C stick or the C buttons in that game or what, whatever it's mapped to more than I ever did because that's that's now how I play games. And the thing about yeah, the thing about like uh, camera controls is I feel like. People un understood that they should generally go on the stick towards the beginning of the PS2 GameCube generation, yeah. and then people figured out that they shouldn't be inverted by default towards the end of that generation. Yeah, yeah. Ha! You're one of the mighty X-Men! <laughs> Fucking Pyro. Yes. Uh, so I looked up to confirm the, the three DLC packs for Ultimate Alliance 3. You got Punisher, Blade, Moon Knight, and Morbius in the first one. Yep. And that gave you a gauntlet mode uh, that was a bunch of harder co-op challenges and rapid succession to earn rewards. The second pack was X-Men themed with Phoenix, Gambit, Iceman, and Cable as new mm -hmm. characters. And they added a Danger Room mode. Um, Makes sense. Where yeah, you basically took down enemies while being barraged by buffs and debuffs. The final one was added... Uh, Mr. Fan the Fantastic Four as playable yep. characters. And then there was a storyline with Doctor Doom as the villain. That supposedly teased the sequel, but I never played it. So. Right. Um, I did, yeah. yeah. I think I, I... I know I definitely messed around with the first DLC. And the second one, I know I booted it up. But I think the... Like, I, it, it is the kind of thing, like, when you're just adding different modes that are like, oh, that's co-op challenges where there's a twist that it just kind of felt the same as what I just did yes. in the other DLC pack. Um, I don't know if I finished Mua 3. I definitely played it for a while, but I it's, also... It's, it's, was, it's okay. I also know that I was playing other things at the time, even if I did like it. Yeah. Um, it, it dragged near the end, too. It's yeah. a game that overstays its welcome. I think... I pretty much got to the point where I was done with it and the game wasn't done with me. And yeah. so I was like, all right. The game's over it was it was a game that I recall getting to a point where I was done with it and then like went back and finished it up when that first DLC hit. That makes sense. Save point. All right, I'm going to call it on X-Men Legends for now. Yeah, no, game... I mean, one is a little basic, but it's still very good. Yeah, uh, what should I put down the score for? Uh, give it an eight. Um... That is, I don't think it'll happen because of licensing nonsense, but in the world where Microsoft owns Activision, and I have a feeling they will be more apt to dip into a back catalog, like, someday, it would be cool to have those... Yeah. Like re-release somehow, but it, I'm not banking on it because I think that's it is so tied up in licensing hell. Yeah, you'd have to. I mean, the good news is that it's. I mean, it's it is all Disney at this point. Disney seems chill to let anyone do anything yeah. these days. I mean, the, the the Gargoyles game is coming back. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like as soon as Ron Gilbert announced the Monkey Island game, it was like, oh, I see. <laughs> You can pretty much do anything. Anyways, we're doing uh, Wii Retail, and I'm going to pick this one. Uh, and I'm going to figure out what I'm going to pick. Um. Oh my god. That sounds like an abject disaster, so I'm not going to do that. Um. God, I, I really like the Wii lineup. I will... I'm just going to point out, uh, I was looking up for some possible features at yes. Nintendo Report. 
We are we are at the uh, I think almost to the day of the fifteenth anniversary of Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. Oh God, that game does not hold it's, up. No, um, it is cool that there is more Harvey Birdman because I like Harvey Birdman a lot, but it is bad Harvey Birdman. It's very bad. <laughs> um, all right. So yes, we're gonna. Uh uh we had it. Uh, this is what we're doing. Uh oh, it says my Wii remote is at one bar battery, which I, <laughs> I believe this is a call out post. Uh, I'll replace the batteries later tonight. Um, do you want to tell the chat why you, why I'm playing this? Probably because I gave it a ten out of ten. You sure did. I do. It is, it is a, uh, I, I believe there's a, you can look up some kind of editorial from a while ago of me saying that I would not give this game a 10 out of 10. But I do remember my logic when I reviewed this game in 2009 uh, mm -hmm. is that I don't, well, and it's also, it's logic that I, I, looking back on now, I disagree with because I think they can make a better punch out that isn't horribly racist. But also, this was an era where Tropic Thunder was a movie that people were somehow okay with. Yep. Um, but my logic was, I didn't think they could make a better punch-out game. Which I do think, in a gameplay perspective, this is still very good. Um, I just, yeah, like, the, the, I the, got a lot of, like, I honestly, I kind of think the NES one's better. Yeah. Get it? The German is a drill sergeant. Yep. This is, like, yeah, whenever people are like, let's bring back punch-out, I'm like, it's impossible. TKO. I won't TKO the next one immediately, but I just remember that one off the top of my head. I like the cell shading art style. Yeah, and I do like. I still like they they managed to do a good job making a punch out game on Wii. Uh, yeah, it just their mm -hmm. one new character is that. Yep, sure is, isn't it? Yep. You know, gestures, black people. Yeah. Thanks, Nintendo. Do they, do they not have black people in Vancouver? <laughs> Who made this decision? <laughs> Unclear. <laughs> oh, oh, ready for this? Yeah, Cisco kid. So one one person from Next Level Games, like the LA, and they came back and was like, "This is what I think a black person is." God. It really is it because like I mean, even just watching you play this, like it it feels good to play, but yeah, like. Going back and playing this any time in the past couple of years, um, it's been a while since I think I've booted it up. It was definitely probably around when the Switch, probably around when the Switch came out. I played it, played a little bit of it yeah. on Wii U, um, and like it's still good. It's just that a lot of the stereotype stuff stands out way worse than I ever remember it, and in, in, in a way that I don't. I like the NES one. I mean, just by a little bit of the lack of detail doesn't doesn't touch on as bad and super punch out i think goes so over the top that like okay you, you do think of like aaron ryan in super punch out like that's uh, eh. um but there's uh, i think you're still dealing with a little bit of abstraction in the fact that it's nes and super nintendo games versus a wii game that has more fidelity yeah Uh Oh, this is Matt, this is the game that you're gonna play on Smash for Pieces, not the NES game? Great. I do I agree with that decision. <laughs> yeah. Because because the version of Punch of Little Mac that is in Smash Brothers is this Little Mac. It is. It is. Uh yes. You should get a live reaction on stream 
of uh, this weirdly racist game. And then, and then the worst thing is that they're like, who can we get to be the secret Nintendo character at the end? Uh huh. Donkey Kong. Uh huh. Oh, you mean to say that their two new characters were a stereotype of a black person and a monkey? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Nice to see King Kaho back, though. And I've also reached a point that whenever I kind of ha hankering for punch out, I just play the NES game. Yeah. And then get like to Super Macho Man and then realize that I'm not going to beat Tyson or, or Mr. Dream. And yes. then I just stop playing. But that is one of those games that I can sit down and I basically have no resistance until I'm like three quarters of the way done the game. Matt points out that if you don't think about it for three seconds, Donkey Kong seems like a good fit. <laughs> And I think, wasn't it, didn't it come out later that, didn't Next Level want to have it be like Princess Peach? Yes, they did. <laughs> and Nintendo was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was like, even I know with uh, Skylanders, because Skylanders had... Bowser and Donkey um, Kong. Yeah. I forget. I know I've definitely, I, like, I in one of the covering that, I, I asked the question of who else they considered. I think Peach was another one that was considered for uh, for Skylanders, but I think but I think Nintendo was pretty. I think Nintendo basically told them like, here are your options. It's Bowser and Donkey Kong. Yeah, probably. I I do think about it where like because Next Level was a developer that I I mean I still have a lot of respect for them um even if I think that the last Mario Strikers game eh. but did that's, you see this? Mm -hmm. It's not their fault that Mario Strikers came out the way it did. That was definitely a Nintendo told you to make this game yes. in this way. Um I don't know. Did you see the... I mean, you, you know the super racist WiiWare game Next Level Games put out right before this, right? Jungle Speed? Yeah. Yeah. Like, they were on a kick of making wildly racist Wii games for Nintendo. Yep. So, I don't know. I like I like, I like like Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon. I think that they are a good developer of Luigi's Mansion games. And they are a very accomplished developer at making games that are technically good and mechanically sound. Yeah. Uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. I Very enjoy good that game. game. I also understand why people are mad about it. I can't wait for people to try and revisit that game before 4. It's going to be so funny. Your Metroid Prime 4 player tweet is... <laughs> delightful. But I do like, I don't know what I would want to see next level make next because I feel like after Luigi's Mansion 3, like, what else do you do with Luigi's Mansion other than more? Yeah, pretty much. And that's probably what they'll do. Um... Damn it. Are you hitting sushi rolls off of this? Yes. Thing? Um, yep. But don't you get it? It's okay, because Nintendo's from Japan. Yeah. Then, um, why does... <laughs> What's 
going to say is Bald Bull up next. Uh, no. Uh, Bear Hugger and then... Oh, God. Ah, I mean, uh, it's okay. They're Canadians. Exactly. They can make fun of Canadians. Uh, and then Great Tiger, and then fucking Don Flamenco. <laughs> and then the top, um, the top group is Aaron Ryan, Bald Bull, uh, Soda Popinski, Super Don Macho Popinski. Man, and then Mr. Dream. Yeah. Hey, Mac, baby, it's time. All right, I'm, I'm closing this out. Uh, what do you want me to put down for it? Uh, mm, that's a really good question. What would I give this right now out of, out of ten? Throw a six down there. All right, we're gonna spin this wheel. Uh, that is on the line, so we're going to spin it again. <laughs> and that is to your benefit, because it was between GBA and ranking. <laughs> uh, we're going to spin the wheel again. Alright, it is very firmly in GBA this time. Alright. Uh, GBA list, or no? No GBA list. Uh, just assume. Um... Star Wars Episode 3, Reve um, Revenge of the Sith. What the fuck? That was such a weird poll, but okay. It, it came up It came up in an episode of Connectivity last year where Raritan and I were talking about it. Because um, I played a lot of that DS game. And he found a cheap copy at the game store that he works at. Um, and he got a copy of it. And then he mailed me a copy of it when he got another copy of this game store. Um, Great. So I played through that game kind of recently on my analog pocket. Oh, I love it is that. a surprisingly solid brawler that looks pretty nice. I do really love that analog pocket. Oh, this is by Ubisoft. All right, I'm gonna it's going to the stream. I'm gonna share it with you now. <gasps> what is this music? I think the in my memory of it is because uh, I played it on the DS one. I think the music is slightly better there because it's horrible. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is incredible. Um. Okay. I'm just gonna let this go for a second. <gasps> uh, Matt says, I played this game on a TV with a surround sound system in front of some friends, and one of them tried to genuinely suggest Joe bring it to OSC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multiplayer, obviously. Damn, it's link cable only. Oh. Uh. Well, there's no undoing. <laughs> Get to pick An Anakin or Obi Wan. The Actually, console version of this has two different endings, <laughs> depending on who you play in the final fight. I think this this might have it too. Uh, these also notably came out a month before the movie. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah, we can't have a lot of text here, so how much can, can, we, de can we condense this? Republic is under attack by Count Dooku. The droid leader, General Grievous, has kidnapped Chancellor Palpatine. Two Jedi Knights lead a desperate mission to rescue the captive Chancellor. No war at the beginning. Yeah. Heroes on both sides.
where the fun begins. I've got a fa bad feeling about this. He's always got a bad feeling about shit. Make an Andor game, you cowards. Oh my god. How good was that show? Dude, that show made me fall in love with Star Wars again. And I yeah. didn't necessarily fall out of it, but like, that was like a fucking I, magical I'd say experience. It, it's, uh. What's, uh, I, I, the, the friggin' Weezer Pinkerton line of, I thought we were married in my mind, but married in my mind is no good. That's yeah. kind of how I felt about Star Wars. Like, I was like, I'm gonna be in for this no matter what. And then, uh, the Rise of Skywalker came out, and I'm like, maybe not. And then Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. And then Obi-Wan, like, just because it was so dramatically better than Book of Boba Fett, I was like, maybe this isn't so bad. And then I got to the end of Obi-Wan and was like, why did why did that happen? Yeah, why did this show happen? <laughs> why did anything in the plot happen? Like, 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 I understand, Ewan McGregor, you had fun being Obi-Wan again. Why, why do you want a season two? The, like, there's no story. No. Yeah, no, that show literally just exists to give that actor more time to play that character. That's all yeah, that was. don't worry. He's going to get a lot more time to play it when they remake the original trilogy in 10 years. Yeah, well. Like that, that was my doomsday prophecy, that everybody can shit on me when it inevitably happens, that Ian McGregor is going to actually get to and look closer to Alec Guinness's age for A New Hope, and they are just going to... Uh, remake Star Wars. Because they are terrified of making a new movie. So might as well just do the thing that Disney does and do a live action remake. Uh, did you see that? Have you seen that they are still. Um, that they are going to start filming a movie here in like six months and they still don't know what movie it is? Yep. Yeah, because I think it's. Technically, the Rogue Squadrons movie isn't dead, but like, well, Patty not, Jenkins not is alive. back, is like back to it now that she just yeah. got fired from DC. Yeah. And I know, like the the what you call it, the um, the Taika Waititi movie, I think also was having, at least reportedly, was having some kind of issues with it. Uh, the reporting was during like, the Love and Thunder tour. Uh. People asked Kathleen Kennedy, is that happening? And she said, oh yeah, it's happening like right away. We're going to start filming for in just a few months here, I think. And then they asked Taika Waititi and he said, I haven't even thought about that movie yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's what it is. It's like... I get Taika with his fuck you money. Like, that was, that was the cool thing about when he made Ragnarok and him successful, is that we just have a, an absolute weirdo who is just going to do whatever he wants. Yeah. It's the hope. Yeah. I mean, I Love and Thunder, not as good as Ragnarok, no. but I also think the problems with that movie are more that um, Disney and Marvel desperately wanted a movie to be two hours long because they were scared of bad reception, and I think that kind of made the reception of Love and Thunder worse. A hundred percent. Because it's, it's definitely, like, I, I've, I've seen Love and Thunder twice, and the first time I was a little disappointed with it. Second time I saw it, I'm like, there's some really good stuff here that is just, like, everything's so condensed and rushed. Nothing yeah. has time to breathe. Do you know what I was supposed to do here? I think you need to jump up and hit it. I, I've been trying. I don't have an... I have a, don't have a jump attack. Uh... Do you hit those things up back at it? I've tried that. Uh, um. I've tried reflecting and guarding and using the force. And I've... <laughs> both buttons at the same time has a ground pound. Hmm. I don't remember... Like, I'm trying to think of what you... I, have, I, I admittedly have been... Is there, Is there an uppercut attack? attack? Not that I've been able to use. Yeah, like, I played this, uh, like, earlier in the year. Um. Uh, 
I'm, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck it wants from me. But... It's also the last time I played this, I played as Anakin. <laughs> oh, great. Up then slash. Oh. Sure. That's something they've definitely told me. Oh, now it's all the fucking ground, you asshole. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's Star Wars Episode 3. Revenge of the Sith for the Game Boy Advance. And more Star Wars talk. Uh, are you watching The Bad Batch Season 2, by the way? I Watch have not. Wheel? Did you I, uh, see season one? I liked I like season one. Season one had some cool things about it. It also I think I remember talking to you about it because it was yeah. that paranoia that they were gonna try to like justify clone Snokes. Oh um, no, a hundred percent. This is like all of this, all of the Feloniverse is leading yep. into how did episode episode nine make sense actually? Yeah. Yeah, um, and I hate that. And that was by the and like, and there were there were parts that I liked at the end of the Bad Batch season one, and I'll probably get around to watching season two because season season was season one was enjoyable to watch for the most part. Yes, um, it did. But the thing that kind of bugged me about that too is just the overarching plot of it is just like, remember the Mandalorian? Like it's the same thing where it's like you know a, a guy who's rough around the edges helping a kid that yes. they need to protect. Um, the season two premiere, I did not watch yesterday's episode. I, sh uh, I'm probably going to do that tonight, but, uh, yeah, no, last week had the two episode premiere of season two. It was neat. It was one story. This is going to be another case of the week. They have Wanda Sykes playing a minor character that has four lines in one episode and doesn't show up again in the other episode. And you're like, why did you get Wanda Sykes? Who is this character going to be? Why does she look just like Wanda Sykes as if you're about to have her in live action? Um, but it is, and it is also, I can't believe Mandalorian season three is in less than two months. And yeah. I, it's, it's such a wild ride over the past year and change of how I feel about the Mandalorian, which like, I really enjoyed watching season one and two in the moment. And I have a feeling once season three starts, I'm going to be fine. But it's more the disappointment of Book of Boba Fett, the kind of... Oh, you like, mean season the, three? Yeah, yeah, season three of The Mandalorian. Um, it's it's the the weird, like, I liked the reveal of Luke at the end of Mandalorian season two. And then it felt like in the Mandalorian episodes of Book of Boba Fett, they were like, okay, people like that, let's do more of it. And I'm like, eh, like... It worked like it worked on the premise that like you do that in small doses, not have like bizarro, weird, deep fake Mark Hamill be a character for an entire episode. Yeah. And that just seems what that show's building towards is it's it's I it's mean, the, Leo the pointing hope is, meme. the it hope is, is, it is that it's point. Yeah. And and that's what I mean, I, I haven't actually deliberately watched the trailer for season three. But from everything that the, the little bits that I've seen and what I've heard is that it seems like oh, we're we're going back to uh Mandalore. To Mandalore. Yes, it's gonna be a bunch of point point if you know clap if you recognize it. Do the Leo pointing meme, and I I I get all those references. I'll probably have a good time. But after Andor, like all the Star Wars stuff seems way less cool. Yes. <laughs> We roll, we spun for Super Nintendo, by the way, so here we are. Um. I have not seen this movie, or this movie, this this game in 20 years. Hell yeah. Um. I did forget how much this is just... Mario World graphic. But weird. Yes. Um. No, what, what I was just gonna say is that, um, the thing about, um, the man, the 
uh, Bad Batch season two is that it's because that show is 16 episodes a season, it's going to overlap with Mandalorian. Yeah. For a significant amount of the Mandalorian's runtime. Yeah, I think really what, because Mandalorian is going to be eight episodes. Yep. And I know, and I know Bad Batch has a couple times where it's going to have, uh, like, I think the, yeah, two episodes for the two. first week. And I think there's like two other times that it's going to be it. So I think. I don't know. Like it's Bad... it's, it's going to be once a week now. So there's uh, 14 more weeks. I think the finale might be two episodes at the same time. So it might be 13 more weeks. Okay. Uh, all right. You got to pick an option for me. Uh, I want to return the gladiator spear. I'm not missing the gladiator spear. Come back when you have what I'm looking for. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm not, what do you mean that you haven't stolen it yet? Hey, Matt, have you ever seen this game? It's such a weird hodgepodge. Uh, why is the Trevi Fountain closed? Like the sign says, bud, coins from the Trevi Fountain were stolen and we can't reopen until it gets <laughs> returned. Here's a pamphlet with more information, says Peach, calling Luigi bud. What? I hate. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, dude. This really, like... This game was always who terrible. The hell, who the hell made this game? Uh, Broderbund, or Broderbund. Yeah, yeah. And Nintendo was like, sure, let's make Mario educational. That'll get parents to shut up. Oh my god, there was an NES version of this made by Radical Entertainment. Fuck yeah! <laughs> yeah, so it's a fucking adventure game. I'm in Rome, and it just spits you in here. It's like, eh, fucking figure it out, kid. <laughs> talk to people. Oh, how do I talk to someone? Oh, you hit up and then A twice, but until the second A button, there's no confirmation that anything happened. <laughs> like the sign says, bud, the Sistine Chapel ceiling was <laughs> stolen. How does that even happen? <laughs> someone up there painstakingly just like chiseling it out. In 1508, Pope Julius II commissioned the artist Michelangelo to decorate the ceiling. He wasn't he wasn't used to painting on plaster. It took him over four years. Yeah, that's just information about it. Yeah, the Sistine Chapel being stolen sounds like it should be a much larger deal than just here's a pamphlet, I guess. <laughs> okay, this uh, I'm just looking at the Wikipedia for this, and yeah. I forgot that. The, the, the plot setup. This might be based on the PC version yes. because the Super Nintendo version looks entirely different. Um, that Bowser has relocated for the Mushroom Kingdom to the real world, yes. where he has set up his headquarters in an Antarctic castle. Yes. Uh, no, I believe that is in the manual. So here are my options. Artifact, computer, globulator, uh, city map. Globulator. Bowser Castle, Antarctica. <laughs> Cape Town, South Africa. Nairobi, Kenya. Oh my god, what is... If you're wondering, do you get to explore all these areas? The answer is, of course not. <laughs> no, that's not what I want to do. I hit right. It's the map. Yep. Here's computer. So this is where... We have to find these NPCs and interrogate them. To see... Who knows what? <laughs> uh, and of course, the problem being 
it's really hard to, to actually interact with any characters. But now I have Yoshi, I guess. So Bowser plans to steal the Earth's treasures with the use of the password-operated remote transportation and larceny system, aka portals. This game always sucked. Yeah. It's the thing I just want to make sure people are well aware of. Is that this isn't some, like, this game was beloved and people look back at it and said, what were we thinking? This game came out and people were like, wait, what the shit? Do you mean this yep. game exists? Like, as someone who played a bunch of, like, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego games as a kid, like, those did this and were good. Like, this is just a bad game. Roaming around to figure it out. Kid, I'm gonna eat you with my dinosaur. <laughs> that, yeah, you have to be a you have to be just the right conversational distance in front of them. Who the fuck programmed this shit? I don't usually somebody, get... somebody very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I usually don't get mad at, at programmers, but like that just makes me mad. All right, where am I? <laughs> this city was built on seven hills in 753 BC. It was home to Caesar, the original Italian stallion. Oh, wow. <laughs> Excuse me? That's some, like, yeah, this is borderline Star Tropic shit where you're like, all right, you're going to go back historically through time and see Cleopatra and also the very real human Sherlock Holmes. The arena was built by an emperor. <laughs> Way back in AD 72, no wonder it's in ruins. That spear was in good shape, though. What? Oh, the best part, by the way, is that when you run, it just increases your movement speed, so you can start running mid-jump, and it changes your trajectory. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Bunny hopping! The city was not secured. <laughs> I'm leaving Rome. There. Rome sucks. Oh no! Uh, clearly we're in Japan. Oh my god, this music. This Chinese city can boast being a capital for 800 years. <laughs> you did not answer my question. You just murdered that thing. Yeah. I like trying to move forward and backwards on these intersections because you just hear cars honking. Yeah, they're sure. I feel like how it's designed, like, you should be able to go through there, but they probably were like, guys, we ran out of budget. Just put some cars honking instead. Like, this is, like, Mario... Like, this Mario game on PC makes sense, because that's, like, Nintendo licensed their characters out a bunch, right? Yeah. Putting it putting out a Super Nintendo version is where it gets fascinating. Yeah, because it is really, like, they. it seems like they had the framework of the PC game and just used existing graphics that worked on Super Nintendo, which is why there's, like, the, the weird mix of Super Mario World sprites with whatever the fuck this background is. If I were Nintendo, I would simply not allow a Mario game I didn't make on my console. Yeah. Unless I was in very close collaboration, a la 
a Mario plus Rabbids. Yep. There's a reason that the CDI games didn't have fucking any console Super ports. ports. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. That's yeah. That's Mario's missing. <laughs> I, I know I'm not ranking that, but two. <laughs> all right, spinning the wheel. Um. Nope, that's Super Nintendo. So we're spinning it again. Oh boy. This does not like to be streamed, but I'm hoping that I can get this to work. So. Nintendo Flash? Uh huh. Uh oh. Uh huh. GX and Matt are loving this. This is the good shit. <laughs> so. Fun fact just about the internet is. Uh, people did a really genuinely great job in backing up a lot of the, um, a lot of Flash and, like, early Flash yeah. stuff from the internet. Yeah, I'm gonna assume this is stuff from old Nintendo websites. Oh, 100%. <laughs> so... Let's see if I can find this and see then if we can give it a 10 out of 10. Um, nope, wrong. That's the list I want. Yeah, okay. Now, now we have to find this and shrink it. And then go to transform, center to screen. Actually, we're going to say uh, fit to screen. There we go. And we're going to put the Twitch chat above it. So I, I didn't realize I haven't done that yet. This is... Um, and then I'll also share it with you. There we go. Mario Tennis Power Tour. You're about to play... I know we already went to <laughs> Mario, Wario Mart, but I feel like Neil should know about Wario Mart. Oh, maybe. Maybe Neil can learn about Wario Mart. Wario Mart was a true treasure of discovery when we found that um here's how to play help clay beat the hand thrown by clicking on the signal that tops it you can also throw the same sign and move to the next screen but you won't receive any points this is just win at rock paper scissors like literally The fuck does this have to do with tennis? <laughs> Reflexes. Nintendo? I would like to have some words. <laughs> you keep throwing scissors. <laughs> or paper. Oh, yeah. It's also, I do love the action of just like, you're just dropping it. Anvils. Anvils on top of a robot? Like. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I uh, don't think you ever selected rock during that. I did once. Okay. Anyways, that is the entirety of this Flash game. <laughs> uh, Alright, so we're going to close that out. Uh, <laughs> uh, what's another one? Here's a good one. We're going to launch this. And then I'm going to share it with you because this is the problem <laughs> with Flash. Is I have to reshare every single time. This is the Chibi. Take the Chibi Robo plug into adventure survey. How badly do you need a Chibi Robo? Take this qu quick and easy survey to find out. All right, chat, I'm going to need you to help me with the answers. That's quick and easy. When you walk into your home, do you normally wipe your feet? Yes or no? First answer does it, people.
Oh, Chad is not respond. Chad is yeah. not giving us answers. Neil, yes or no? Uh. Oh, I. Thanks says no. 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 Have you ever cleaned your house on a Friday night? Chat. I have, but only because I don't treat Friday nights as extremely special. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, just go with yes. After Thanksgiving dinner, do you volunteer to do the dishes? No. Do you always remember to feed your pets? Yes. For the most part, do you get along well with your immediate family? Yes. Do you know how to... Because I think that really only comes into play because my immediate family, I would assume, is now my wife and children. Yes, and it is. They're the best. Um, <laughs> if it was the, uh, the, the, my family growing up, eh, you know, maybe. Do you know how to change the bag in your vacuum cleaner? Uh, I have a bagless vacuum cleaner. So That sounds like a no to me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you eat, use a plate when eating cookies? No. Have you ever purchased a toilet, toilet brush and or shower squeegee? Yes. You need a chibi-robo very much. <laughs> <laughs> you may not know it, but you're not the cleanest individual on the planet. You would benefit greatly you, chibi -robo. from owning a chibi-robo. I'm going to take it again. I do wipe my feet. I do clean. I do volunteer. I do remember... I do get along. I do change the bag. I do use a plate. I have purchased. You need a chibi robo for fun! <laughs> wow, you were the cleanest, most well rounded person we've ever surveyed. You may not need a chibi robo, but just imagine all that you would be able to accomplish with chibi robo working for you. Uh, what happens if you say yes to everything except for love your family? <laughs> a very organized person <laughs> okay anyways that's a that's a funny gag um what else Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Well, okay. Here is... <laughs> oh, are you watching the stream? Yeah, yeah. Here is Parasol Fall to promote uh, Super Princess Peach. Is it, is it something about how women are emotional? Is that is that what happens in this? Uh, use your left and right arrows to help Perry collect coins and gems. Watch out for clouds and wind gusts. Oh, this audio is terrible. And this controls so... This is me just holding right as hard as I can. Now left. This sucks. This is... <laughs> Oh yeah, no, this was on Neopets. Nite most of Nintendo's games were on Neopets. This... Really... Also, yeah, the gusts of wind are just... Sometimes it's even worse to control. Have fun. The fuck am I doing? Peach is not blinking. <laughs> She's a robot. She's a robot. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not doing that one again. Sorry, folks. Um, what about... Hmm... Oh, this one sounds incredible. Hang on.
Okay. Come on. This will be the last Flash game for now. I can't just show all of them, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're at 99%. Come on. I'm going to be really bummed out if... Doesn't go through. <sighs> Seems like it might not. Damn it. Alright. Well, I'm going to try a different one then. I don't know what I was having trouble with there. Um. Maybe we'll get it to work. In the future. Whereas this... This is art. What the fuck is this? I was gonna ask if you know what it is. Is this Samurai Warriors? Like... No. Your mission oh. is to fire the Odama and Odama. ring the Nintendo bell. It was on the tip of my tongue, Odama. The harder and more accurately you ring the bell, the more points will be awarded. Do not hesitate, for you must fire all of your Odamas within the time limit. Move your mouse. I, mm -hmm. I forgot when I where I got Odama. Um, I do remember that there was a copy of Odama that was at the Nintendo store in New York City. I think until like 2010 that just sat there unpurchased. Perfect. Move your mouse to aim the cannon and click to fire. You must be wary of the troops on the battlefield, for the troops you crush will affect your score and slow down the rolling Odama. Crushing the blue enemy forces will earn you bonus points, but crushing your own red troops will subtract points. If you miss the Nintendo Bell, no points will be granted. Aim and time your shots wisely, and victory will be yours. Oh. Oh my god. This is horrible. Yeah, why doesn't this support the microphone? Every now and then I'm like, man... Nintendo should be weird again. And then I'm like, but Odama. This was... Oh, no. That just... I accidentally just clicked that link that is now dead. Uh, but... That is the, uh... That's the whole Flash game. We're gonna play that again. <laughs> this is not even how Odama plays at all. Go. Matt, do you know what Odama is? Because you're rank in the middle of ranking all of the Nintendo games. Not even a little. Oh! Holy shit. Oh, this rules. Alright, we're gonna stop showing Odama because Matt needs to learn what Odama is. Not from the- not from discussion. I promise you, Matt. I, I might need to make sure that I still have a copy of the game, and Matt, you might have to come over and play Odama. Uh, it, I promise you it is nothing like this Flash game. Uh, this Flash game is just bizarre. Um, all right. Spinning the wheel. How many more wheel spins do you think you've got in you for tonight? I know you were... Um, I'm probably uh, 11. Uh, 11 Eastern is probably my... Oh, I thought you were going to say 11 more spins. No, I was no. going to be like, holy shit, look at you go. No. <laughs> it's like, I don't have 11 more spins in me. Pro probably two or three, depending on the length. Okay. Um, Wheel of Hell Endurance Edition. Um, <laughs> mm, I could pull a pocket card jockey for this DS3DS. But I don't. Oh my god! I keep on forgetting, and then I remember that a new pocket card jockey jockey is coming to Apple Arcade in a week. Yeah, in like I'm a so week. Excited. Um, yeah. I am. I got my iPad. I broke my iPad out after I have not touched it since Fantasian was just okay. Um, um, did you play all of Fantasian or just the first part of Fantasian? No, no, no. Because the second part, when they were when when all the stuff was like we made it like sixty hours long, I was like, I do not want to spend that much more time with this world. <laughs> <laughs> Like, um, I it's it's the kind of like I think my my hopes for well I think Fantasia does a lot of things right, 
Uh, I will say the, the some of the writing was, eh. uh, be, be. yes. Um, I just remember that there there's a lecherous old man pretty early in that game that just set a bad tone, and uh, like I do love the the was it the dimension or whatever. Oh yes, the, the like that is system. such a good idea, and I do like the battle system a lot. But um, I felt like the world like. Everything that you do in the world, you're like, wow, look at these dioramas. And then I did. It was OK. Um, it's just that I think I probably had it built up too high. The music's yeah. really good, too. It's really good. Um, if it came out on a console, I'd probably happily play through all of it. But my life is that my Apple, my way to play an Apple thing on Apple Arcade is on an iPad. Yes. Um, again, you could get an Apple TV 4K for 99 bucks. That, I might I might eventually do that. Uh, Pocket Car Jockey supports the Apple TV. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that is. Uh, I I have because my wife my wife has been using the iPad, and I'm like, yeah. come January twentieth, I'm taking it for a while. Oh yes, yes. Pocket so, Car Jockey time. Tomorrow is Illustrated, which is a jigsaw puzzle game, whatever. But then a week from tomorrow is Pocket Car Jockey. Uh, Apple Arcade still pretty good. I have, okay, I have literally in my head been thinking about for, like, a year now, like, I should just strong arm you into a, uh, like a fucking bi-weekly podcast where we just each play an Apple Arcade game every week. <laughs> probably, probably do it. There's a, I've discovered so many good games at Apple Arcade or games that, have, like, Alba, Alba's really good. Yes, it is. I mean, Monsters Expedition, uh, incredible. Oh, yeah. Uh, the I mean, really, all of the US two games that are there. They also I forget the name of it, but there was the one that came out before Alba. Um, oh yeah, th that was pretty solid. Um, even if the one that came out on Netflix, Desta Desta's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's coming out on Switch soon. Um, yes, I believe so. What are some other? Uh, I mean, and then you do have the like the lineup of things where it's like here's this token uh mobile game that here's a version on apple arcade yes and those are the disappointing ones yeah all and right even, hey yeah uh, q game q games but their frogger game and pixel junk scrappers those are both fine mm -hmm. there's a lot of good stuff there yeah that's what i'm saying it's like i feel like i should strong arm you onto that um all right oh boy can will this work? I'm trying to get this to uh, get picked up by OBS, but it does not want this at all. So I think I'm gonna have to. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. Neil, what is this game? Um, I can't tell because just I, uh, I should know. Should know from the font. Um, I, I, I don't know if that is this a Yoshi's Island game. Yeah, this is, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Yoshi's New Island. Yes. So here's what we're doing. I'm going to raise the volume. Oh, no. This is, this is a game that your opinion of it will, uh, uh raise if you play it on mute. Someone in the chat, this will be their first time hearing this. It sucks because the game itself isn't that bad. It's just the music is abhorrent. The balls to put songs from this in Smash. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't give a fuck about the story. This is a story that took place a long, long time ago. Way up in the skies, a magic cozy land where babies come from. When a mommy Mario and a, and a daddy Mario love each other real much. Wow. 
Why does the stork keep carrying these babies? The stork keeps on stealing the babies. I want Nintendo to release Yoshi's new new island. <laughs> and so the stork picked up the babies again. Starts off with just really pissed off parents being like, what's happening? Huh? <laughs> I do like how the story starts with like it's a magical land and like this dipshit bird. <laughs> <laughs> Everything would be fine if this bird did his fucking job. I forgot that this was the plot setup for it. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> it actually is really funny. <laughs> All right, colonizer. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely. <laughs> What is Bowser if not a, a colonizer? I mean, he, he he got. I guess he got a little better as he got older, because then he was just trying to marry a woman that didn't want to be married by him. As opposed to trying to take over. This an fucking island. song is the worst one. <laughs> Matt, what fucking YouTube videos are you watching? Tone are they setting? <laughs> like, listen, guys, this is gonna suck. Oh, hell yeah. No, 3D models don't look good on this game. Also, uh, the worst part about this game isn't even the soundtrack, it's the fact that it's a fucking Yoshi game. With baby Mario. It is the kind of thing that, like, I have a very complicated feeling about about Yoshi's Island. Because there are things that I like about the game, and you were someone, I think it was, you could go back to the ranking stream that I did with you. Yes. Where we were talking about this, where it's like, whatever, like, cool things that Yoshi's Island did get totally negated by the fact that a core mechanic of the game is if you fuck up, then a baby just screams at you. Yep. Like, or if you fuck up, then you do your progress isn't saved. Yeah. And it, it, it is something that I, I believe in this one, I think, like, if you finish the level... No, that gets like introduced in Yoshi's uh, Worldly World. Oh, Jesus. Um, I forgot this even came out before Woolly World, didn't it? Yes! Holy Lord, I forgot how long it took for Woolly World. Spoilers, uh, this week's episode of Connectivity has Raritan and I talking about the Fire Everything Wii U Direct, um, which Yarn Yoshi was announced uh, two and a half years before it came out. Yes. Uh, no, this game uh, was just... It wasn't even announced at E3, it was just available at E3. Yeah, yeah. It was just one of those where there's like a fucking display, and you're like, wait, what? What is Yoshi's New Island? And then you play it, and then you go, oh, I see. It is a new Yoshi's Island. 
And it's my, like, I, I mean, I definitely, I, when you have Yoshi without Baby Mario, it's a lot better. Um, and I even, I mean, I think, honestly, my favorite Yoshi game is probably Crafted World. No, this is a fucking R-Zest game. <laughs> this is by the makers of Balan Wonderworld. And Fling Smash. Well, I ran out of eggs, so fuck me, I guess. <laughs> I th or no, no, I think I think R Toon made Fling Smash and then became R Zest. Yes. Great. Hey, that baby. Yeah, if only we had all sent our uh, gameplay data, they would have learned, hey, uh, hitting the aim button and then waiting for it to land on the destination and then hitting the shoot button is a shit-ass mechanic <laughs> when we have motion controls and touchscreen and analog controls. But then all the people who think Yoshi's Island is the greatest platformer of all time will be mad that somebody Good. changed it. Good. <laughs> Let them be mad. They shouldn't be mad when they discover how wrong they are. Uh, remember- it's, it's like one of those things, like, I, I remember the, the Polygon, when they had their, like, their review rubric, and they had the cheeky thing of, like, no game is perfect except for Link to the Past, and, like, Link to the Past is very good, but I just hate when people have that, like, assumed, like, everybody thinks that this thing is perfect. Which is what I feel like what happens with Yoshi's Island, is that people just have that assumption like, oh, everybody views that this is a great platformer. This is the and gimmick like, of this one. Yeah. Okay. That was definitely gameplay. <laughs> uh, um, my... During the E3 20... 14 presentation where they re-announced um, Woolly World. Woolly World and gave it its name. They like took the time to explain how how they viewed like what the how they viewed uh, Yoshi games internally as different than Mario. And their the explanation they chose to give was. Of course, the main difference is Yoshi games don't have a timer. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you. Fuck you. I think I, I interviewed Tezuka at that E3. Anyways, I'm not playing more of this game right now because fuck <laughs> this game. Yeah, I can't think of any other differences between Yoshi games and Mario platformers. All right, just to punish you all, I'm keeping this audio on until the wheel is done spinning. The difference between Mainline Mario and WarioWare is that WarioWare has a very short timer. <laughs> all right, we wear time. I'll pick. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Fuck you, Nintendo. Fuck you, Nintendo. Fuck you, Nintendo. I do like this. Uh, no, I looked up. Um, we had a yeah, cause at, at that E three where they reintroduced Woolly World. Um, I think it was I think it was me, Aaron Kalutska, and, and Barubi, uh, got to interview Tezuka. Mm -hmm. There is this chain of. Could you go into more detail about the Amiibo integration and the Miiverse integration into the new game? Tezuka says, sorry, but we can't get into details at the moment, but stay tuned. We follow up, same with Miiverse, or dot dot dot. Yeah, Miiverse too. Uh, NWR, oh darn. Tezuka, at least you tried. <laughs> uh, that's code for, oh, it's not locked in yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Christ. What could I... String, you know what? That's what we're gonna stream. Um, and then I'm gonna 
I'll share this to you on Discord. And the hope is that OBS picks it up sometime before the stream ends, I guess. What, what I think it is? Yes, it is. There it is. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's pricking up the GameCube controller. I see. <laughs> this one supports the GameCube controller. Okay. I will happily play it on the GameCube controller instead. I appreciate Mr. Driller's, as a franchise, commitment to, to the GameCube. Every every game ends with a fucking letter based on what platform it came out on. So the yep. WiiWare 1 is Mr. Driller W. Yeah. I did not play as many. Like, I don't think I played this, this, uh, this Mr. Driller game, for example. But... That the the one that came out that was the GameCube one that they brought over to Switch. Yes. That game's incredible. Yeah, it's really good. Uh Japan is for beginners, China is for intermediate, and Russia is challenging. <laughs> the three nations. Let's go. Yeah, that kinda works. I do like blowing people's minds and telling them about the uh, the lore of Mr. Driller and how it ties into the way, because what, he's, he's Dig Dug's kid? Yeah. And I forget who his mom is, but it's someone from another arcade game. This looks really good for a WiiWare game. Yes, it does. Turns out it's just colored squares. You can do a lot with that. <laughs> Oh no. Uh oh. Uh, Why do they have the national theming if you spend the entire level underground? I have no idea. It's it's because the I don't know, the Mr. Driller national team pride whatever they want. Yeah. I thought I could catch that damn. Yeah, Mr. Driller fucking rules. And they yep. released a whole ass Mr. Driller game on WiiWare. I think, wasn't there also a DSiWare one? Yep. Mr. Driller Mini. Yep. Uh, Mr. Driller was $8 for an entire Mr. Driller game. And, yeah. It's a good no. deal. Fucking rules. Alright, I'm gonna spin... Uh, that's on the line, so we're going to spin again. GBA. We'll call this the last one for today. That works for me. Um. What's a GBA game? Uh, Matt, I just saw what you sent me, and I'm trying not to react too hard. But it is very amusing. <laughs> uh, hmm. Hmm. People are going to have a field day with that, aren't they? Um. All right. Great. Yeah, send it to Neil. <laughs> I had a feeling what was it about having glanced at my email during this? Yeah. Secrets. Um, all right. 
this will, this will be the last one. Oh, no, a Disney Ubisoft game? Yeah, I'm sending it to you on Discord. Phoenix Interactive. Is this the Beauty and the Beast storybook game? No, that, that's for a Game Boy Color. Yeah. And but published by Nintendo, more importantly. Yeah. This is Winnie the Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure. <laughs> I have no, no, no idea about this other than the name. <gasps> what the fuck are these graphics? Yeah, the Beauty and the Beast one is the one that you're about to stream. Hang on. Where are the fucking options? Um. There. Um, all right. I want to fucking where's where's the video options to make it look like it fucking looks on the Game Boy Advance? Um, core options, video, color correction, GBA, interframe accurate. And then. Oh, my God, this looks way better now. Yeah, that original way it looked was not <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't support saving. Of course it doesn't. Who thought this supported saving? Be honest. What kid is going to remember passwords? I hope it's just like, take her. Oh my god, and they're all numerical. On a not so blustery day in the Hundred Acre Woods, Winnie, the Pooh, and Christopher Robin decided to climb a tree. You're firing up the Google machine for me? Thank you. This game has never encountered a child before. Oh bother, there's a rumbly in my tumbly, says uh, the Pooh from that horse slasher flick. <laughs> You're always hungry, Pooh Bear. Why don't you try, said the serial killer, thinking of something else. <laughs> it's a very good idea, Christopher Robin. But what I will point out shall I think about? <laughs> the company that made this made not one, not two, but three pets games from Ubisoft with a Z. Fuck yeah. Well, you could remember some of your favorite times. Oh yes, now think. <laughs> think, think. My favorite times are often at birthday parties. Oh, I know just the perfect thing. And so, Pooh decided to remember those birthday parties by looking at his friend's birthday scrapbooks. To Pooh's birthday scrapbook. Oh, bother, I don't think that scrapbook is open yet. Fuck you, let's go to Eeyore's. Fuck you. Tiggers? That's also not open yet. This what Piglets is open. <laughs> now to forget about his appetite, who remembered the birthday of one is very dear friends? It's Piglet's birthday today, so I must go and wish him. A very happy birthday. You've got some choices for passwords. Thank you. Say there, Sonny. If you want to go and see Piglet, you'll have to open the gate first. Just use the key that's on the tree stump. Pick up objects, press A. An iron key. All right, please. I do have the key. Why would you say I don't have the key? <laughs> Hang on. 
I just clicked take screenshot because the game has just given up on instruction. Who's a piglet? What the shit is this minimap? It's not even helpful. I do they really just want you to go to Piglet. I have a lot of questions. Why, hello, Pooh Bear. Are you going to visit Piglet today? Oh, yes. As today is his birthday, I thought it would be the perfect day to pay him a birthday visit. <laughs> Do be careful, dear. One of the plagues is missing on the bridge to his house. It might need to be replaced. I have a feeling some of it's a little bit impacted by the fact that Winnie the Pooh non-Disney version is in the public domain. Yeah. But I do remember, like, my childhood, and, I mean, this would have been, this would have come out, uh, this was early 2000s, I, I surmise. Yes. Um, but there, like, was a long window where, like, Winnie the Pooh was still kind of relevant from that Disney perspective for probably, like, I don't know, what, 80s to the 2000s? Yep. But now that's kind of... It's not there anymore. I think there was a Winnie the Pooh movie like 10 plus, 10 to 15 years ago. But it feels like Disney's not really... I mean, it's probably because they're busy with other more profitable shit. Yes. Um, There's like but some I do... cart cute cartoons on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, there okay. was the live-action Christopher Robin movie with Ewan McGregor. Yeah. And I will say, I mean, part of this is because I had a, a friend of mine um, got my oldest kid a... a you know, Winnie the Pooh stuffed animal that for a, a long time. What in the he, shit? That's terrifying. Oh no, heffalumps. <laughs> Hello? Uh, what the fuck? Heffalumps are terrifying. <laughs> I'm trying to find the balloon. I promise. These nightmares just find me wherever I am. Fucking <laughs> boob hair walk. <laughs> there it is. I found it. The Havilums died. You murdered them. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, heffalumps and woozles, man. They fucking come out of nowhere. I mean, Matt, Matt, uh, you're going to Disney soon, right? Just go go ride the... Is the Winnie the Pooh ride still the thing? Sure. You'll get the whole 411 on, on Winnie the Pooh. And Tigger, too. Yeah, if it were safer, I would go to Disney. Friends that take me to Disney. Audio is terrible. Thing, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good ride. Like, I'm not gonna knock the the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Um. I did, I, I rode on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride once as a kid, which is the ride that, uh, that, uh, the Winnie the Pooh ride replaced. And Mr. Toad's Wild Ride didn't scar me for life because if memory serves, I think that's a, a ride that generally was seen as too scary. The walk cycle for Pooh Bear is hilarious. It's really bad. What the fuck am I supposed to do with this crate? <laughs> I cannot push it down. Did, uh... 
<laughs> I mean, the poo that 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 Winnie the Pooh ride does have the heffalumps and woozles like terrifying portion of it. That I mean, compared to Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, is not not that scary. Oh my God, that animation was bad. <laughs> All right. We're exiting. Hi, Pooh Bear. All right, I got passwords from Matt. Oh, my God. All right. We're going to go to Eeyore. Why does the Eeyore area have the same music? Because they only have one song. No, they have a song for if the Heffalubs are here to kill you. <laughs> calling on this game. This game sucks. Yeah. Alright, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, I had a blast. Um, shame we didn't get you into a punishment game, but that'll happen sooner than I later. Kept a, I kept with spin of the wheel, I'm like, eh. Yeah. I should, I, should, I should make it a, you know, attempt to uh, rig up my streaming stuff at some point again. It's been a while, but I have the internet that's good enough for it. I just probably would need to I hardwire my my internet um, to make sure it would run fine. Yeah. Um. Yes, I have a. Sp this is where I reveal I have a spreadsheet of punishment games. Uh, most of them are in the. This is too fucked up, so I need someone that's really willing to take a bad punishment game. There's a couple that are like this one is just weird. But there's a there's a few that are wildly fucked so, up. So I don't know if they filled it, but I I hear there's an opening for Mario Party Monthly potentially. No, um. absolutely not. <laughs> um, Matt says I'm a little too good at giving up punishment games, and that anyone agreeing to these streams does not fully understand the danger they're putting themselves in. Um. No, I, like, I am very much not, like, for example, if Neil ran a punishment game, I know what I would give him. It's not that bad of a game, or it's, it's like, it's not that, like, soul-draining of a game. Whereas, like, when Don was streaming with me and spun on punishment, I knew he could take some wild bullshit. <laughs> so I gave him he's gonna watch the uh, Xbox press conference where they had un announced the Xbox One and every time someone says TV he's gonna pause and play 10 minutes of an eShop game that costs $2 or less <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible and that's his punishment stream yeah it is like a 12 hour stream he knows <laughs> He had a whole stream about where he was buying games for th to prepare for that. Um, <laughs> no, like that is um, that like I can give wildly fucked up punishments, but uh, uh, no, I all, only for people who have expressed to me that they want the depths of hell. <laughs> Uh, otherwise, I might just, um, you know, I gave Joe four, or Matt, I, through Matt, I gave Joe four Game Boy ga games that were identical to one another to watch him descend into madness. That, I mean, that was, I, I watched that. That was beautiful. Um, 
the real the slow realization on Joe's face is 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 art. Yes. Um and then Matt has a collection of punishment games. Um the trick is to always already be dead inside, yes. But um Matt is doing um four games. He's doing uh Disney's Beauty and the Beast, a board game adventure. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm, o- I'm only seeing three punishment games, so I think you're only doing three punishment games. He's doing that. He's doing uh, Winnie the Pooh's Home Run Derby, which is hell on earth. <laughs> um, and then he's d- he's going to try and spend 30 minutes, a full 30 minutes, streaming Master of Illusion Express Mind Probe. Oh, I remember that. All those bullshit things. Yes. So that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you, Neil. Uh, do you have anything you want to plug? Um, Matt's Fire Emblem content on Nintendo Report. Um, because it's very, very good. And there's more of it coming. Uh, the review will be up before launch next week. Great. Uh, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.